The Mel MI6, known by the NATO reporting name Hook, is one of the true marvels of aviation history. It was not only the heaviest, but also the fastest operational helicopter of its era. Even the US authorities could not conceal their admiration for this flying giant. Today we're investigating the MI6, a remarkable achievement of Soviet engineering. The MI6 is now enjoying its well-earned retirement. However, it still holds a special place in the memories of aviation enthusiasts. For a long time, no rotorcraft could match its capabilities or even come close to what the hook could do. Its story began in the early 1950s when the Soviet army required a heavy helicopter capable of carrying loads of approximately 6 tons, including heavy artillery, tractors, trucks and airborne self-propelled units. By the end of 1952, the Mill Design Bureau submitted its proposal for a new helicopter, the VM-6, with unprecedented dimensions. At that time, designers favored the tandem rotor configuration for heavy machines. In contrast, the VM-6 had a single rotor with a diameter exceeding 30 meters. It presented a significant challenge for its time as the typical size for one on operational helicopters was no more than 25 meters. Although the XH-17 prototype by Hughes had a 41-meter rotor diameter, trials showed that it was too inefficient and cumbersome for mass production. The VM-6 was to utilize a single turboshot propulsion system, a technology that was beginning to replace piston engines in helicopter design. During the design phase, the Soviet Army requested a 1.5-fold increase in lifting capacity. As a result, Mill had to redesign the machine, resulting in a significant increase in its size and a doubling of the number of engines. The company also added wings to reduce the load on the main rotor during flight and to achieve speeds comparable to transport aircraft. By the end of 1953, Mill completed the preliminary design of the VM-6, which featured two Klimov TV-2 VM turboshafts. Moscow approved the full development stage on June 11, 1954, while also tasking the Kamov Design Bureau with designing a helicopter of roughly the same class. However, the KA-22 from Kamov would ultimately lose the competition. Mill finalized the draft design of the VM-6 by the end of 1954, and by June 1st of the following year, Moscow approved it. The company nearly completed the construction of the wingless version of the helicopter in October 1956, with only the manufacture of the main rotor delayed. Therefore, the prototype was fitted with an aerodynamic brake molinet to carry out resource tests for the time being. By assembling the rotor in June 1956, the prototype was ready for flight trials. On June 5, 1957, the MI6 took off for its maiden vertical flight and on June 18, it completed a circular flight. The decision to equip the MI6 with Salavyov D-25V engines, however, caused a delay in the start of joint state tests. Based on the D-20P aircraft turbojet engine, this turboshaft offered the same power as the TV-2VM but was more compact and lighter in weight. However, it had a different direction of rotation, so the R6 gearbox had to be replaced with an R7 while simultaneously reworking the oil supply system. Despite these setbacks, Moscow decided to initiate serial production of the MI6 almost two years before the completion of the state tests, driven by the armed forces' keen interest in heavy helicopters. The company assembled the first four serial hooks in 1959. Mill continued the production of the MI6 until 1980, delivering a total of 874 helicopters. The new generation MI26, whose NATO reporting name is Halo, replaced the hook in the production line. The fuselage was primarily constructed from aluminum alloys along with some magnesium alloys. Each of the main rotor's five blades incorporated an electrothermal de-icing system similar to that of the engine air intakes. They featured a tapered steel tube spar to which built-up metal aerofoil sections were bonded. The blades featured coincident flapping and drag hinges as well as fixed tabs. The main rotor shaft was inclined forward at a 5 degree angle to the vertical. The semi monocoque tail boom was detachable. A controllable stabilizer was mounted on it and a fixed rudder was fitted on the boom tip. The four blade tail rotor was made of solid wood. 
mounted above the main landing gear struts, the wings, with a span of 15.3 meters, offloaded the rotor by providing approximately 20 to 25% of the total lift during cruising flight. When the MI6 performed the flying crane roll, the wings could be removed, enabling a greater payload capacity. Some subtypes, including the firefighting version, already lacked them. The controllable wings were later replaced with fixed ones, which reduced the overall weight and simplified the helicopter's control system. The root sections of the wing consoles featured screens designed to reduce the heat from engine exhaust gases by cooling them with the incoming airflow. The R7 gearbox and rotor head weighed 3,200 kg, which is heavier than the combined weight of the two turboshaft engines. Mechanics used hydraulically operated ladders on both sides of the helicopter to service the power plant. Between the exhaust pipes, driven by the R7, a fan cooled the oil coolers and partially cooled the exhaust pipes, gearbox units and engines. The exhaust gases were discharged through steel pipes, which also housed the shafts of the free turbines of the engines leading to the gearbox. The heated air was directed to the air-to-air -air radiator, warming the cargo cabin. The navigator sat in front of the crew cabin while the pilot and co-pilot were in the middle and the radio operator and flight engineer were at the back. The sixth crew member was the loadmaster. The crew cabin could be armored with 12 removable KVK-2 homogeneous steel plates. Initially, the MI-6 was fitted with the AP-31V three-channel autopilot, which was later replaced in 1962 by the more advanced AP-34B. Unlike its predecessor, it was connected in series rather than in parallel, which greatly simplified piloting. After the introduction of a new autopilot in 1967, a rotor speed stabilizer was also installed. Additionally, during this modernization, the ultraviolet illumination was replaced with red instrument lighting, significantly reducing eye fatigue for crew members during night flights. Some MI6 were equipped with a 12.7mm machine gun on a limited mobility NUV-1V mount at the navigator's position. This practice quickly proved its practical uselessness as the weapon's horizontal aiming angles were only 30 degrees to the right and left and the helicopters were mainly fired upon from the rear hemisphere. The cargo cabin measured 12 meters in length, 2.65 meters in width and 2.5 meters in height, providing a volume of 80 cubic meters. Its floor could withstand a pressure of 2,000 kg force per square meter at the front and rear, while this figure reduced to 600 kg force per square meter in the middle. The MI6 could transport up to 65 soldiers or 41 wounded personnel on stretchers accompanied by two medics. However, in extreme cases, the passenger capacity could be increased to as many as 150 people. The helicopter could also transport two ASU-57 assault guns or a BTR-152 armored personnel carrier, along with various guns and howitzers, as well as standard tractors or engineering equipment of the appropriate weight. There were three doors on the sides, one on the right and two on the left. At the rear of the fuselage were clamshells rear-loading hatches measuring 2.65 meters in length and 2.7 meters in width. The rear ramp used for loading and unloading could withstand cargo weighing up to 12 tons. The service lives of many critical parts were continuously extended. In some cases, it increased from 50 hours to 1,500 hours. The MI6 had an endurance of 2 hours and 51 minutes and a hover ceiling of 2,500 meters. In 1962, the onboard AI-8 turbo generator was installed on the hook to facilitate easier engine starting. Afghanistan, Algeria, Belarus, China, Egypt, Ethiopia, Indonesia, Iraq, Kazakhstan, Laos, Pakistan, Peru, Poland, Russia, Syria, Ukraine, the USSR, Uzbekistan, and Vietnam are former operators. With a six-person crew, the MI6 could carry up to 90 passengers. It had a length of 41.74 meters, a rotor diameter of 35 meters, and a height of 9.86 meters. The helicopter's empty and maximum takeoff weights were 27,240 and 44,000 kilograms respectively. Two 5,500 shaft horsepower Salaviyev D25V turboshaft engines 
provided a top speed of 300 km per hour. Its cruising speed was 250 km per hour. The helicopter's range was 1,450 km. It could climb to an altitude of 4,500 meters, in other words, 14,800 feet. MIL developed various serial and non-serial MI6 variants. Let's mention some of the most notable ones. The MI6A was a new basic modification of the helicopter created in 1971 as a result of numerous changes made during the first decade of the machine's operation. The MI-22 was the airborne command post version with a side-looking airborne radar. Some helicopters were also converted for search and rescue, fuel transport, medical evacuation and firefighting roles. Of course, the MI-10 flying crane with the NATO reporting name of HARC was also based on the MI-6. The hook was a true record breaker, earning global admiration even from the rival bloc. On October 30, 1957, the helicopter took off with a load weighing over 12 tons to an altitude of 2,432 meters, which was twice the record of the US S-56. The US press heralded this achievement, stating the new Soviet giant MI-6 can lift any of the largest Western helicopters with a full load. On September 21, 1961, it achieved a speed of 320 km per hour, which had long been deemed impossible for rotorcraft. Mill was awarded the Skorsky Prize, the most esteemed in the USA for this accomplishment. Two years later, the MI6 even covered a distance of 100 km at a speed of 340.15 km per hour. The Soviet Air Force utilized the MI6 in a real operation for the first time during the 1968 invasion of Czechoslovakia. The hook also served in the Soviet-Afghan War with the 181st and 288th Soviet helicopter regiments. The Afghan Air Force also operated a separate MI6 unit staffed by Soviet specialists. Alongside troop, supply and vehicle transport, MI6 were often tasked with lifting damaged aircraft. According to unofficial data, the USSR lost 28 hooks between 1981 and 1988. Furthermore, at least three Soviet MI6 were lost in Angola. In 1993, Georgian forces shut down a hook and the helicopter also saw service in Chechnya. Its most dramatic mission was undoubtedly to cover the stricken reactor number 4 at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant with sand and concrete on April 26, 1986. The Soviet army deployed eight helicopters for this critical mission, which were later buried underground due to radioactive contamination. The Indonesian MI6 took part in operations during the confrontation with Malaysia, and in suppressing rebellion groups in West Kalimantan. The Vietnam People's Air Force also operated the hook during the Vietnam War. Whenever the US Air Force attacked North Vietnamese air bases, the MI6 would lift fighter jets to safer camouflage areas, then lift them back to their original positions after the air raid. The helicopter also transported supplies and troops. Vietnam also employed MI6 in Cambodia. The Iraqi Air Force also used Hook during the iran Iraq War. An Iranian AH-1 Cobra shot one down. The helicopter also took part in Iraqi invasion of Kuwait in 1990. During the Six-Day War, the Israeli Air Force destroyed 10 Egyptian MI-6 on the ground. The Hook also participated in the 1973 Yom Kippur War. In 1970, China acquired three MI6 to use as a reference for its heavy helicopter development program. However, the Chinese engineers later realized that copying the hook would be too difficult and abandoned the project. Afterwards, they served in the Wuhan military region. Seeing this giant flying was undeniably an awe-inspiring experience. The MI6 has always been one of the most remarkable achievements of the Soviet aviation industry. Alongside carrying troops and materials, it sacrificed itself to prevent a radioactive disaster from befalling the world. The hook is undoubtedly a true legend. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.